Hey guys, so some of you still struggling with sub DM Blender, and we're going to try to break this down to the fundamentals here, real quick. So, we're all aware of what a quad is you know, four edges, four verts for a single face. Okay, when these things subdivide, they create something almost like a cylinder, but it's not quite a cylinder. And uh, just keep that in mind if you do like a level one subdivision on it. And these are most notably, you're used to working with them in kind of like grids or patches like this, right? Or creates these nice even quad topologies throughout uh, your model. You know, the problem you're going to run into is when they start to converge with each other. These grids, you're going to have to have, find ways to collapse them or redirect them and all that other fun stuff. And that's where the next shapes come into play, right? So the triangle. It's really important to understand how this thing behaves when it subdivides. So, you know, three edges, three verts in a single face. But when it subdivides, it does this number. And you're going to see this pattern repeat a lot. Uh, you got three quads, and at the center is an end pole. So this is a single vertex with three edges, right? And, and on a 3D model, you might see something like this. So like the beveled cube, usually you do the loop cuts and then subdivide it. Uh, if you were to apply that, you would see at the corners, you have a triangle more or less, okay? End pole, three quads. All right, so let's move on from that. The end gon, at least simple end gons are extremely useful to use. Uh, complex end gons, not so much. Simple meaning uh, five edges, five verts, single face. If you have six or more, uh, generally you need to figure out how to break them back down into either uh, five, um, a five point end gun or uh, working with quads. So when this subdivides, you'll see something like this. Now I've rearranged how it subdivides a little bit because this is going to be kind of a more common pattern you might see. But basically at the middle of it, you'll have an e-pole. Okay, an e-pole has five edges coming out of it, right? But it's going to have the uh, five faces as well, the five quads. So this will look something like this on a model like this. And here is your your uh, end gun, your topo there for it with the e-pole. Okay, so when this subdivides, you'll see that that e-pole shifts up in this case. So that's good. Now, so this is why you can use triangles and end guns while you're modeling. Okay, this is one of the main reasons why you can get away with that because you're not stuck um, where you only have to use quads uh, on the first first pass anyways, because they'll they will break down into uh, quads later on, right? So I'll do a little practical exercise here. Maybe we're making a shape like this, right? We want to subdivide it one time. Turn off subdivision and edit mode. I'm gonna add a couple loop cuts in here to hold things a little bit tighter. You can maybe do bevels things like that right you see we don't have good edge flow can't use loop cut quite the way we would normally but we can still utilize it kca and create edges like this um, and slide them around perhaps um, but as this subdivides you'll see we start getting this kind of a shape here okay and if we were to subdivide it once and apply it we'll see we have the triangle here turned it into that all right, and um, this didn't have really the proper topology here for the corner, but you'll see that there is in fact an e-pole, and that has turned into that. Right, um, so we didn't actually have um, an end gun there though when we started. Take note, we had an arrangement like this. That was already the more or less kind of the topology of the end gun right there. So uh, we could have. You know, if we wanted to try to subdivide that, you'll see that causes errors. That's because that's a complex ingon. It has way more than five, right? But if we did something like an inset, that might work. Might not. Who knows? Do some loop cuts. And generally for this shape, this is what you're looking for. Um, these edges here, this edge, goes all the way back to the other side. Deselect the corner. Slide it back. Hold Z. Select the corner. Slide it back. This is going to create that sidewalk like so. But that gives us that topology up here now. So that'll subdivide a little bit more predictably, anyways. So shade smooth. There we go. So you can get away with using those shapes as you get started. But as you're working on mesh, you're going to start to see that pattern repeat all over the place. And that's a good thing because when you start recognizing it, you'll realize that's where. A lot of times your topology is redirecting. So if you were to say like um, do something else a little bit different though, like you wanted to bevel a vertex, so you control B and then hit V 
and you build a little vertex, you want to subdivide this, this is what we get. Okay. Might be something you want, maybe not, who knows. But let's say we wanted to hold this in shape a little bit more. So we can do like a, an inset. Um, we can select a little bit more and then do um, an outset, hit edge rail, and adjust it accordingly. Okay, so you can see what's going on here now. We got these big end guns, triangle. All right, we subdivide it once. May or may not work out for you. Can't do loop cuts now. And this is why I don't usually recommend using triangles or end guns, but you can get away with it, especially if you're going to use a knife tool to kind of go back through and cut things up a bit. You can see we can't exactly. We might get away with this now, like that, right? Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Um, but it's made that triangle smaller on the inside here. And so you can do things like this as well. Um, but occasionally you might have to um, work this out, right? You might have to add more edges in here. And when you do that, you can see it's going into those end guns, it's dying. You might have to manually subdivide things like this sometimes. It seems a little bit tricky on how you do it, but actually take the face, you right click, you poke it. Poke face, you have to make sure you're using face selection. You can poke that real quick. You can use the knife tool, run it out. This is the manual subdivision of it, right? But because we know how that topology is going to work out, we can do things like this because we know for a fact now that I do KCA, right? And I plug this one in all the way to the other corner. You see, we're, that's still an end gone right now, but we're we're able to push things out basically. We can shift things around however we need it, and do things like this, right? And this one might want to join to there, so I'm gonna press J. This one might want to join. Oh, there should have been one over there. Let's do this again, KCA. Okay, I'm gonna join these two. Dissolve that there. Okay. So manually subdividing things is a little tedious. You probably won't want to do this if you can avoid it, but it is a possibility you might have to. Because you might need certain edge flows and things. And once you understand these triangles, how they um subdivide, it's pretty easy, right? And the same for the end gun, but generally the end gun's a little bit easier to deal with because end guns. If you cut them in half a lot of times, it works out just fine. So, like, if you have this shape here, you just add a cut across the middle. There's your two quads. Okay? It's pretty simple, right? Not too bad on that one. And, of course, if you had a different type of a an ingon that you had to work out, say you had... Something more like this going. Oh, let's not do that. We'll dissolve that real quick. Let's say we had something more like this going on. So this was six sides, right? Well, this one you still split in half, no problems. Um, but if you had something with an additional edge, all right, if you poke this face, it's going to give you an idea of what you can do. And you'll see here that like maybe you want this corner and this corner subdivided. So we got to um, collapse these control X by a face. We do that. Now we got a triangle left over. Right. So you can either collapse it and get to the topology of a triangle like that, um, or you can subdivide the edge and have something like that. So it's all quads now, basically. And so whenever you run across that in a model, you'll know kind of what to do at least. You poke the face and kind of see what you can do with it. A lot of times you're going to end up running an additional edge out. That's usually what happens. Okay? And um, at least one edge, maybe more. But uh, you can collapse them too. So all in all, this is really simple. Like this is the fundamental kind of idea of, of creating a sub-D model. I just wanted to reiterate it in this video because it's... Once you look for those patterns and you start seeing them, 
you're going to have a lot easier of a time working any kind of subdivision mesh. So uh, do take this one and and spend a little time looking at those shapes. And as you're modeling, look for those kinds of details in your models. So you, you'll start to recognize them a lot quicker, at least. All right. Anyways, I'll check you out in the next one. Hope you enjoyed this. And take care. All right.